Hi, folks. I'm John Potoshnik. Hey, thanks for joining me. I'm going to do something really different today. I've never done before, and I'm pretty excited about it. I have a guest, a, li a live guest. Well, you know, I think he's alive, but um, <laughs> my guest has um, helped me over the years keep my website updated, make it more appealing, and also uh, more user friendly. You know, I've created a blog for, I don't know, several years. And uh, it's a weekly blog that I write, and, and many of you know that. But, um, you know, I've had the privilege in, in the midst of doing that blog to interview over 100 artists. But, you know, I've never conducted an interview like this. So it's pretty exciting to be able to try this out. It's through my guest's influence and, and encouragement that I'm going to try this new format uh, on a make it a regular occurrence, hopefully monthly. We'll see how that goes, but we'll be interviewing other artists in this same type of format. I think what it's going to do is it's going to make the interviews a little more personal, and also um, uh, I think they'll appeal to you uh, in a in a greater way. With that, I want to introduce my guest. His name is Riley Toshnik. He is the um, eldest, he's the eldest grandson of my wife and I. Uh, he is also the, the oldest grandson of my, our oldest son, who is Jonathan and his wife, Tiffany. Riley's 20 years old, and he is, uh, he and I also share a birthday just a day apart. So, hey, Riley, welcome. Hey, thanks for, uh, thanks for doing this. I'm looking forward to doing this interview here. Yeah, you know, uh, you and I know that you've been involved in computers a long time, mm -hmm. and you know a lot about it. And so why don't you share with us how you got going with computers, what your education is, and also, um, you know, where you are today and where you plan on going. And do that yeah, in, so you know, 100 words or less. No, yeah, kidding. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just Computers started uh, several years ago. I, I was going through my high school career, um, completed my freshman year, and then, um, well, stepping back a little bit, I got into computers uh, in, around my freshman year, and I was pretty dedicated to doing that. Um, and over that time, I got to a point where uh, I kind of figured out what I wanted to do. I wanted to get into business. I wanted to do uh, software, website design, which I'm in now. And ultimately I got to that point where I, I knew where I wanted to, where I wanted to go in life. And, uh, in my junior year of high school, I went uh, homeschool and just dedicated everything I was doing to, uh, software websites, uh, computers, business, all of that kind of stuff. So that's where I'm at right now. I am, I've, I didn't end up going to college. I'm all business right now. And now I'm building websites for uh, primarily lawn and landscaping companies, but uh, I've helped my grandpa here, John, uh, with his website, his uh, art website. So I do a variety of different websites, um, but I'm primarily doing website design at the moment, do a little bit of software, and that's ultimately where I want to go. Mm -hmm. you're, you're really heavily involved in marketing. Uh, you've, you've actually uh, influenced me quite a bit on marketing but you're real involved in marketing and business. Why do you like that? Well, marketing ultimately drives the business. And I like that. I like the strategy. Uh, and marketing is very much a lot of strategy. Um, figuring out how you can uh, help people in many ways, how you can get in front of them and actually get your, your product or your painting across to them. Because ultimately, uh, one thing, one trap that I fell into was I was under the mindset you you put the product out there and people will come. That's mm -hmm. not how it works. Using marketing, you can get that product out to people, and actually get your, your expertise out to those people who would love to purchase a product or use your services. And that's a lot of why marketing is super appealing is it's getting your, your product, your service out to the masses and actually letting people experience what, what you do. Yeah, Art, artists... Uh, me and well, not in, not me in particular, but artists in general, I think, have a really hard time 
promoting themselves. We're kind of, um, in many ways, we work quietly by ourselves in the studio, have little direct contact with people when we're creating. So it's kind of difficult for us to, uh, you know, put our work out there and promote ourselves. How would you, you know, how do you overcome that? Is that just a mindset deal, you think? Well, uh, you're so, uh, artists have a, a serious expertise that very few people have. It's creating something that looks great, that communicates emotion. Um, so marketing may come on the back foot. The You may not prioritize that because you're focusing so much into creating something that's beautiful, that looks great, that, again, communicates emotion. So you may not put much thought into marketing. But no. when it comes to trying to get your 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 pieces out there and getting people to actually see it and getting it in front of the right people who would actually be looking to purchase something. It's it's very much changed over time. Uh, previously, maybe galleries, and I'm sure galleries still work, but maybe, maybe galleries aren't the primary place people are going to. Of course, it's great to uh, put some of your pieces in galleries because people uh, across the world, depending on where you've put your galleries, could stumble upon something and you may suddenly find the right person. But nowadays, a lot of things are going digital. Yeah. Um, posting on Instagram, Facebook, uh, doing some YouTube videos. Uh, these are things that you could be doing to get it out to more people because people are on social media all the time. If you can create something really interesting, really compelling on these platforms and just uh, make sure that those people browsing social media can stumble upon your paintings, it gives you a much better chance of actually being seen. So social media may be a good place to start um, if you're struggling with being seen out in the, uh, in the world. Yeah, that's something I think I want to deal with maybe a little bit farther into this interview too. But hey, I wanted to know, um, you know, with your marketing and business, you've done a lot of reading, obviously. Uh, who have been your biggest influences do you does anybody stand out in particular there's been a few books uh, the number one book that i i remember uh, that really kind of changed my mindset in terms of what i could potentially do in life how much i should focus um, and just being the one that i guess put this way works the hardest to get the most results is a book by grant cardone called Ooh. the 10x rule a grant cardone grant cardone okay yep yep he is a he may not be the the type of character for everybody. He's a very he's a, I think he's in Florida, so he he has a little bit of a very upfront with you kind of attitude. Uh, and the book may be especially rereading it. It's it was a little bit overkill, but it was a great book to get me started to get me thinking in the right way. So that's the number one book that I remember really changing my mindset. So when you go ahead, Riley. Yeah, I was just going to say maybe one or two books. Um, I, I forget the, the authors of these books, um, but uh, one of them being uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People. That was another great book. These are, these are the kind of books that are widely recommended um, and that I've found good influence. And then the other one was Think and Grow Rich. It was another book kind of changing my mindset, thinking the big picture, thinking about uh, how do I get to where I, where I want to go? Those were books that were highly impactful. Yeah. They, you know, as you know, I've written a book too. And one of the things I talk about in that book a lot is, you know, you can read all the books you want, but applying the things that you read are, are super important. So mm -hmm. uh, do you make notes when you read things like that? And, and then, you know, do you try to apply things pretty quickly? And uh, is that how you operate? Yeah, I, I should probably take more notes than I actually do because I tend to read the book and then move on and then I forget. Maybe I don't forget, but it kind of goes, the information that I learned goes on the back burner. Um, so what I either need to do is take notes to refer back to them, or I just need to read the book in a timely manner where it's coming up to a point where I'm actually going to apply the information. Mm -hmm. um, that's how I find that I learn the best. If I am learning a subject right before I have the opportunity to actually start doing it and applying the information that I pulled from the book or a video or maybe a conference, that's when I find the information sticks and I'll be able to apply it in a better manner um, throughout. So if I just read a book and 
it doesn't have anything to do with what I'm about to do in the near future. I'm gonna have to reread it again to get all the information back in my mind. I, I, I lose a lot of information if yeah. I don't apply it quickly. Yeah. So when you're, um, you know, does one, one thing stand out particularly in your mind and that you learned in marketing that has really made a difference in, in, the, in the, your businesses? Yeah, yeah. So specifically applying to my website stuff, because I'm helping a lot of other businesses with their marketing and figuring out when somebody comes to their website, potentially looking for a lawn care service, how do you make sure that you give them the information that they need to feel comfortable and confident in choosing this particular particular lawn care company? Um, one book that I didn't mention was called They Ask You Answer. It's all about answering questions. Um, and being the company that people go to, to get their questions answered. And with that, you build trust, you build confidence, um, and you become the one that people uh, can rely on to give you straight answers. Uh, you're, you're the one that's answering que the questions that nobody else, nobody else asks. So mm -hmm. that's a book that I've really found helpful and that I've felt like it impacted my business. Um, and you could also look at it from the aspect of, or from the perspective of art. Uh, when you're putting out a painting, uh, maybe you, maybe you aren't necessarily answering questions, but you may be wanting to tell a story behind that piece. And I believe you've implemented something like yeah. this. Well, yeah, uh, through your encouragement, I have. Yeah. 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 And when you give people a perspective of why you came up with the piece, what the story is behind it, buy into it. Um, and you kind of communicate what you're trying to communicate inside the painting, whereas people may have their own interpretation of it. It may be off, uh, off base with what you were hoping to get across. And with that story, yeah. you can get people to really buy into potentially the emotion behind the painting. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. I, I think uh, things I've read too, apart from what you've told me, is that uh, people love stories. And when you can... Uh, tie two things together like that, what you're doing and what I'm doing, tie it together with a story, maybe the reason behind it, what your motivation is, that sort of thing. It, it uh, makes a connection with people and they, I think they can relate better too. Yeah. Yeah. And if I just make one more example of the website stuff, um, when, when I'm looking at a lawn care or landscaping website, you can talk about all the facts and the features of what you do. But the thing that is really going to make people comfortable about potentially hiring a company is being able to buy into a story. What's yeah. the story behind the company? So a lot of what we try and uh, try and push and get them to implement is talking about their story as to why they started the company. Who's behind the scenes? Who am I going to be working with? Making the business feel a bit more human and less like a business transaction. That really goes a long way. So having an about us page or something on the website to talk about who you are why you got started, what kind of experience you have, um, that's incredibly helpful as well. And again, it's something that you can have on your, your art website as well. Talking about who you are, why you got started, what your, what your story is in general. These are all things that can really help um, over the long term and getting to people to buy into who you are and the type of artist you want to be. Yeah, I think that's right, Riley. Hey, I know you're a really hard worker. What's a typical day for you like? It's, uh, it's like it's you're changed. behind that computer all the time. Yeah, yeah, all day I'm behind this thing. But uh, fortunately, it's something that I enjoy um, and I can do that. If I didn't enjoy it, it would be a real hard time sticking behind the computer and not just uh, doing whatever throughout the day, whatever, whatever comes into my, uh, there could be a lot of distractions if I didn't enjoy it. But right now, a lot of it, I'm trying to really get back into the gym because it can really help clear my brain, get me thinking uh, and focused correctly throughout the day. So I'm trying to do that, but oftentimes I'm, I'm getting up at seven in the morning. I'm maybe eating some breakfast or something. I'll work up until about one o'clock. That's when I go to the gym, one o'clock in the afternoon, and then I'll just work again. My day's pretty simple. My schedule's pretty simple. It has a lot of flexibility. So anytime I need to help him with the website stuff, I've probably got some time. So, uh, but yeah, a lot of projects, things going on. I may have some things here and there, but my, my schedule is uh, fairly flexible. And I know you got a pretty exciting hobby. You want to share that? Or which I guess it's not a hobby. It's probably something you really enjoy. And also I wanted to ask you about 
how important it is to be passionate about your work. Obviously, you are, and it makes a huge difference in going forward. As, as for me, too, the same thing. I love what, what I'm able to do, and uh, same for you. So how important is that, really loving your work? Yeah, kind of like I said, if if I didn't enjoy what I was doing, doing and maybe this is some uh, something other people have experienced as well, if you don't enjoy what you're doing, it's going to be really hard to stay focused and get ahead of everybody else. Yeah. So if you love what you're doing, you'll put the time in, you'll put the the thinking effort into really taking your your art or your business to the next step, um, and you're you're going to exceed. Uh, a lot of the maybe expectations or gather more opportunities that could be out there uh, with just investing time into your business. Hard work ultimately pays off, not to make this a motivational uh, kind of uh, podcast here, but uh, what you old, if, you, if you love what you're doing, you have the best advantage because you can put in, put in the hours, you can invest the time, and you can really invest the focus into the art in uh, into, yeah, in this case, art and making sure that you're honing in your skills, you're improving yourself because you're always going to be learning something new. And that's something that also comes with enjoying what, you, what you're doing. Yeah. You get to learn. You're always looking to learn something new and progress further. So when you, when you love what you do, you've really got an advantage. Yeah, that's what I was going to bring up to you because the learning doesn't stop, does it? I mean, yeah. I mean, if you want to grow and keep up with your profession or even ahead of your uh, competition, so to speak, um, you got to keep after it. Mm -hmm. so are, yeah. You're continuing to read and study uh, stuff related oh, to yeah. your business? Yeah. Yeah. There's always something that you can learn new out there. And um, there's plenty of books that can help me uh, progress further. And um, I have slowed down on books. I need to get back into it because... There's always, not saying that I, I know tons at the moment, there is still a world of information out there that I haven't touched yet and that I can learn. Yeah. Um, but books, podcasts, things like you're doing right here, starting this podcast, giving people the ability to kind of see what you're doing and what your thought process process is, your books, your, your trainings. These are places where people can go to learn. Um, and learning is incredibly, incredibly powerful because there's all but, and I've said this a few times, there's always somebody out there who has learned a skill um, or learned a, a strategy that maybe you haven't learned yet that could give you an edge in your business or whatever you're doing. Um, mm -hmm. So always continue learning because you're going to find stuff that you wouldn't have thought of that just progresses you even further and even faster than you or would be progressing if you just stuck uh, stuck to your own guns, didn't go out there and explore, you can really get a leg up on people. Yeah. Um, I, I kind of got sidetracked there too, but I wanted you to just briefly tell people what you do for fun. Yeah. Yeah. I, you're working I, all the time. So I guess you do leave the house periodically. Yeah. Periodically. But the number one, the number one thing is, is racing. That's the thing that I love the most. Um, what kind of racing was, is that? What was that? What kind of racing is that? I mean, there's all kinds of racing. Yeah, car racing specifically. So uh, a Mazda Miata is what I race most often. It's my favorite thing. Uh, the, the speed, the competition. I think I, I, I'm, I think I'm finding that I really like the competition, the racing. Um, yeah, that's that's the one thing. If I'm if I'm getting out of the house for the weekend, uh, my preference would be to go racing. But unfortunately, that uh, I can't be every weekend. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm constantly consuming racing videos, reading about this stuff, watching the Formula One race uh, this uh, this morning. I'm always looking for more racing content. I'm always uh, I mean, looking to learn as well. I, I still have plenty to learn on racing. So uh, there's a book that uh, for racing, uh, starting to read that, that kind of thing. Always looking for racing content. Yeah, as you know, it's something I always wanted to do, but was just never able to. So it's I'm kind of living my dream sort of through you and your dad. So I enjoy that. Hey, since this is kind of a art related uh, podcast I'm doing here, what do you know about art? Do you know anything about art? Do you even know how to spell the word? <laughs> I struggle sometimes <laughs> with spelling the word. It, it's a tough one. Um, but yeah, I, I know, I, I, again, it's a world of unknown in my mind when it comes to art, because I've only, I've barely scratched the surface with it. Uh, 
I've kind of talked with you a little bit about it, but I don't dive into art as much or nearly as much as you do. So yeah, it's just uh, not your thing, but that's yeah, okay. I, I appreciate it. There's no doubt about that. I appreciate art. I know kind of what I like and what I've seen out there. Um, I may draw a little bit here and there, um, but I'm terrible at painting. Uh, when it comes to implementing color, that's where I fall apart. I can sketch things out, but I just can't add color to it. Yeah, um, well, I wanted to ask you that too, because uh, we're getting close here to the end, but the, what do you like? You said you, you know what you like. So what do you like? I mean, what draws you to a particular painting, for example? Yeah, I think I'm drawn more towards vibrant colors. I like a pot, or not a podcast, but an art piece where there's a lot of contrast between maybe the background and the, the uh, whatever's on the foreground of the painting. So we have an art piece in the home, in our home here, um, where it's kind of this dark scene in the city. It's a raining, rainy setting. That's yeah, um, a great painting. You have kind of these taxi cabs driving through the city, and it's almost like you're looking through a windshield with rain on it where it dilates the, the brake lights and the headlights of the cars, and it really almost explodes the color of the brake lights. Yeah. Um, I really like that with the dark background and the bright, the bright colors of the brake lights and maybe the, the uh, lights that are turned on in uh, specific rooms of the building in the background. Really like that painting. I think that's a little bit what I'm drawn towards, the high contrast paintings with lots of color uh, that... It just kind of pop when you look at it. I like those paintings with the colors that pop off yeah. the uh, off the canvas. You probably uh, you favor realism though more. Although that painting has a lot of abstract qualities to it, but you you favor a painting that you can recognize what you're looking at. Is that I think right? so. Yeah. yeah, I think so. It doesn't have to be photo realistic like this painting that we're talking about here, and maybe you can put up a picture of it that yeah. I can send you. Yeah. Um, but it, it's certainly not photorealistic, like you're saying. Um, it, it's got, and it certainly wasn't painted in a way where it, it's a very flat uh, canvas. It, it has lots of texture yeah. to it. Um, and I like that. We, there, there are maybe one or two pieces that kind of have that similar, similar style where they've kind of, I don't know what the term for it would be, but they've kind of blobbed up the paint on yeah. the canvas. It may it pop. Um, I kind of like that. Yeah. It, I don't think it's the traditional, it's certainly not the traditional style, style but it gives it kind of a, a 3D, 3D looking effect to it. Yeah, it's one of those paintings that when you're up close, you can't tell what in the world's going on, but the farther you get back from it, it all kind of comes together. That's what makes those kinds of paintings very intriguing. Mm -hmm. So maybe I can share that with the audience here uh, when I put this all together. Hey, uh, before we close, I wanted to ask you, um, you know, if let's just Put yourself in the place of an artist. Mm -hmm. So how would you, uh, we're not going to talk about how you establish your career. You've already referred to that somewhat through maybe galleries and so forth, but mm -hmm. how would you go about establishing your career and, and maybe creating a brand for yourself and selling your work? How would you go about doing that today? Yeah. It's I guess a, via the internet, I guess is what we're talking about. So you yeah. got maybe a few minutes here, four or five minutes. And then okay. we'll have to close. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a tough question, but there are certainly certainly things that you can do, and it's uh, in in many ways you have a lot of new opportunities nowadays because back then when the internet wasn't uh, widely used or wasn't even available, you had to uh, you had to do a lot of work in person, going out, meeting people, uh, and finding maybe ways. I don't know, maybe even the news newspaper was a way to promote art. I'm not even sure back then. Um, but nowadays you have things like social media, you have your website, um, you can utilize things. So I think nowadays podcasts, is, podcasts are a bit tough, especially for somebody who doesn't have uh, a big audience already, somebody who's already following them, but it's still an incredible way. If you have an audience, it's an incredible way to really build a good connection with them because now you're having a conversation, they can maybe get involved in the conversation in some way, shape, or form. But I think the biggest way when it comes to, or the, not the easiest, but the best way to maybe start getting yourself out there is Instagram, because Instagram oh. is incredibly focused on photos. Uh, oh. You see less of the, the silly stuff that you may see on TikTok or Snapchat or things like that. Yeah. It's 
a lot of people who are in the professional scene really push for Instagram. It's a great way to get your paintings across and you can build a good audience there. Uh, the other thing is- You don't think you want to use, uh, use much verbiage with Instagram, more just pictures and the smallest of uh, explanation or no explanation? I think you could probably use it similar to how you may, uh, on say the gallery page of your website, you have, you have all of your paintings and when you click on one, you see the bit painting larger in a larger scale and then you have a little snippet below it. I think you treat it similar to that. You put your painting on Instagram um, as the main picture and then in the description of that painting or in, of, that, of that post, maybe talk a little bit about the painting. Give a brief oh. description, okay. that kind of thing. You don't need to tell a big long story about it because people are naturally there for the pictures. Right. They may not read as much, but people may read the description. They oftentimes do read through the summary of the picture somebody posts, but oftentimes it's very short, it's to the point. So maybe you have the title of the painting in the description or in the, in the post uh, text, um, or you, you could have the painting uh, title and a very short uh, description of why why uh, what the what the uh, setting behind the painting is why mm -hmm. why why did you paint the painting in this mm -hmm. way that kind of thing i don't know if that's the best way to describe it but have a have the picture of your painting and then have a brief description to get people to kind of understand what it's about yeah uh, that kind of idea so in closing here you 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 think an artist ought to be involved in what facebook instagram um website probably for sure right mm -hmm. Yes, you, yeah. maybe a YouTube channel. What, what, what do you think? I think if you're really trying to build a brand and become that well known, it's worth investing some time into YouTube. Just uh, hop on YouTube, record some videos, um, and talk about maybe do a weekly highlight of a painting that you've painted. Uh, yeah. Get in front of the camera. Uh, that's a good idea. Uh, yeah. On, uh, did I break up there? Yeah, we're breaking up. I don't know what that was. Uh, it looks like my internet. It looks like I lost connection there for a second. But um, yeah, I don't know how much uh, I broke up there where, where I last left off, but ultimately that weekly painting highlight idea. Yeah. So like standing in front of the camera for maybe a, a few minutes, have the painting over to your left or right somewhere. Next. You just kind of talk about the, the details of the painting, kind of... Yeah give a brief idea of maybe the style that you use, the, the theme behind it, the idea, the emotion, kind of give people a brief idea. And then that gives you content to post on Facebook. You can uh -huh. even post it on Instagram. There's a lot of uh, things that you can do there to promote it. Ultimately, the idea behind social media, um, primarily focusing on Facebook, Instagram, maybe even YouTube, is to get your stuff out there. Uh, yeah. if, if you're just painting and maybe you just have a website, you may not be uh, you may not be found as much as you would be if you were out there on social media, getting your paintings out there in front of people, um, following well-known artists, maybe striking up some kind of connection with them, where they, maybe they share some of your art. I don't know what the what the idea is there, but social media opens up a door of opportunities to put you in front of more people who may be likely to uh, purchase your purchase your art. Yeah, good. Riley, thanks for joining me here. I, I want to, you know, folks, if you like this format, I, I want you to uh, like and comment below. And if you have suggestions of how this can be improved, I would really appreciate that too. Um, you can get more content uh, if you follow me on uh, Facebook. Um, I'm a, I also have a YouTube channel. I, I am on Instagram. Um, I, of course, have my website. I write a weekly blog. i also have a monthly newsletter, do a lot of different things. And you can access all that stuff pretty much if you just Google my name. Um, it'll lead you to about everything. So Riley, thanks a lot for this. Um, I hope um, you enjoyed it. And I sure did. And appreciate your the content you gave us. And uh, maybe we'll do some more. You never know. Maybe but, uh, so. Best yeah. of you with your work. And um, we'll see what happens. Awesome. Thanks so much. Okay, Riley. Thank you.